Hey kids, Flexing Teacher Weber here. I hope you're doing okay. Um, we're going to keep looking at the Pythagorean Theorem today. Now, your last assignment, MP207, numbers 1 to 8, a lot of you were doing really well. Um, a few of you were making a very, very common mistake, and that is uh, you can't always do the questions the same all the time. Sometimes uh, in the right triangle, you're missing the hypotenuse, and sometimes you're missing one of the legs. And you do those questions slightly different. So I'm going to do two questions in the examples today. The first one I'm going to do is where we have a missing hypotenuse. Now before you do any math, you want to study this right triangle. And you want to find the legs and find the hypotenuse. Now remember, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. So in this particular question, you can tell the right angle. It's that where that little square is. Remember the right angle will always be an angle that makes an L shape or a 90 degree shape, right? A 90 degree angle. So there's your right angle. And the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So in this case, we know we're missing the hypotenuse. So the Pythagorean theorem says, for right triangles only, if you take the square of the hypotenuse, so if you take x squared, that will equal the sum of the squares of the two legs. So in this case, one leg is 24, and we square that, oops, so 24 squared, and we add on the other leg squared, plus 10 squared. And now you have a math equation that you solve. x squared equals, when I do 24 squared, 24 times 24 is 576, plus 10 squared is 100. And I keep working down the page. x squared equals 676. Now this part is really important. Um, I want to know the value of x. So what I do to go from x squared to x is I take the square root of x squared. And if I take the square root of x squared, I have to take the square root of the other side. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 676 is 26. And that's actually a perfect square, so that's an exact answer. And I should make sure I put my units of measurement, meters. And of course, you can recognize there that uh, 26 is the longest side, right? The hypotenuse should always be the longest side. Now, since this is a perfect square, we would say a triangle with sides... 10, 24, and 26 is called a Pythagorean triple. Now that's an example where we are missing the hypotenuse. The next example will be done slightly different, so see if you can pick up the difference. I'm going to flip forward. So number two, we have another right triangle. Um, let's find where the hypotenuse is. Here's your right angle, and the hypotenuse is going to be opposite to that. We know the hypotenuse this time. The hypotenuse is 14 centimeters. What we're missing is the length of one of the legs. So the Pythagorean theorem says... I take one leg squared, so one of our legs squared is x squared. I add it to the other leg squared, so the other leg is 10, and I square it. And that will equal the hypotenuse squared. So notice the difference here, is this time we're not missing the hypotenuse, we're missing one of the legs. We still solve this as a math equation, it's just done a little bit differently. Next up is x squared. 10 squared is 100. Equals 14 squared, which is 196. Now I want to get the variable x by itself. So beside the x squared is a plus 100. I'm going to do the opposite of that, minus 100. And I'm going to do minus 100 on the other side of the equal sign. I'll keep working down the page. I get x squared 
this disappears equals 96. Now again, I want to know the value of x. So to go from x squared to x, I do square root. And if I do that to one side of an equal sign, I have to do it to the other side. So when I go from x squared, now I go to x. And this is not a perfect square, so this is actually going to be an approximate answer. We'll do that to one-tenth. So the square root of 96 is 9 and 79... 9.797958, let's just call that 9.8 centimeters, and that's not an exact answer, that's an approximate answer. So, um, two different kinds of questions. In this question, we were missing the leg of the right triangle. In the previous question, we were missing the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So, Two different kinds of questions. I'm going to give you more practice today and make sure you can try to distinguish between the two kinds of questions. Um, hope you have a good weekend and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Flexing Teacher Weber, out.